All right, guys, welcome to the video that is gonna make every guy I have ever slept with completely regret it. So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? What's up guys and welcome to the Tuesday video. I am sorry it's late. I'm actually filming it on Tuesday. I have been so busy doing things that are not productive. I have Michaela in town, one of my viewers slash friends, and we're hanging out. Not today. Jay took her out to the gym and stuff so that I can work. But yesterday I was stressing about not having an easy to edit, well relatively easy to edit video to post today. And she was like, just wing it, just do something fun. And then, as I was looking through my subscribed channels feed, I saw someone doing a tier list. Now every time I see a tier list, List, I always go through my head like what can I make a tier list out of that people will actually want to watch I can't imagine anyone wanting to watch a tier list of me doing like movies or metal anything really like maybe I could do sex toys or sex positions or sex related stuff But do you guys really want to hear my personal opinions about what my favorite metal bands or video games are probably not I mean we could try it Let me know in the comments if you think of anything that you want me to tier list other than this whether it's sexual or regular And I would be happy to give my input and opinion, but we're gonna start off this series if it does become a series organically with something very spicy. We're going to be doing a tier list today, a very honest one, of every guy I've ever fucked. If you've been watching this channel since its inception, you have come with me from eight guys to 11 guys, which is now my body count. No one, well not no one, but a lot of people do not believe that I've only fucked 10 or 11 people. And I say 10 or 11 because 10 was where I was at the majority of my YouTube career. Everyone's always like, yeah right, girls take off like 20 dudes, there's no way her body count is that low but to enlighten you as to why this is the case I have had consistent good S tier dick living in with me for the last 17 years. So it makes sense that if I met someone 17 years ago, which is like what, over half my life ago, even though I had sex pretty young, it was 13, previously thought to be 12 until my uh, diary video that I posted. You can see that here and in the description. But anyway, even though I started fucking really young, I only had like two or three years of fucking people before I met Jay. And then Jay has made it so that I don't have to go out hounding for cock. And it also makes it so that it has to be something pretty special or entertaining or different for me to even want to venture out of the house and go endeavor upon a new cock because I have great cock at home so why would I waste my time? Other than something like a new experience or someone I'm just really into at the moment or someone who has some kind of feature that I'm really attracted to and that doesn't happen too often. I don't get into guys too often so much that I actually want to like, I don't know, travel or fly them down or something or actually leave my house to go get the dick. So if I hadn't had Jay all these years, of course I would probably be like 20, 30, 40, even maybe 50 guys. Though I doubt it because I would probably always have some kind of live-in fuck buddy or something even if I didn't find someone who I felt I meshed with enough to be like a life partner. We're just rambling at this point so let's get into the structure of this tier list. We are gonna go S, A, B, C, and D. We're gonna give the worst one a D. There's only 11 people. I don't feel like we need six or seven different tiers and I like the fact that the worst grade is gonna be the D. Maybe it's some kind of a very very tiny consolation prize for being one of the worst dicks I've ever had. And we're going to be doing this chronologically. I've written them down because sometimes I can't remember exactly in which order they were. I'm going to be very fair here. Like I'm gonna be honest about like we were young or it was partially my fault or we didn't fuck that much so we didn't know each other that well. I'm not gonna be an asshole because I actually don't have any bad blood with literally any of my exes or people that I've fucked before. I mean to be honest the only kind of drama I like to create is the kind of drama that's consensual and ends in a lot of kinky sex or makeup sex or something. The criteria by which we are going to judge these men, and by the way, yes, there's a lot of women that I've slept with too, so my body count is technically higher, but I don't really consider myself a true bisexual anymore. It's more like I'm just kind of a cuck queen. I'm turned on by watching a guy that I'm with fuck another girl or have another girl there. I'm definitely turned on by women, but not necessarily without the cock involved. My turn on for women in a vacuum without cock, a cockless vacuum, is more the aesthetic of their bodies or the way that they move or the elegance of them or their voice or something. It's not necessarily about me wanting to pound their brains out as I assume is the attraction for most men and lesbians. So I wrote this down as kind of like a guideline. How attracted to them I was is going to be a criteria. Their dicks of course is going to be a 
criteria. And of course, if you know any of these people or can find any of these people, I'm gonna be a little bit vague because I don't wanna ruin someone's life, either by their employer finding out that they had some kinky sex with me or something, or by them just wallowing in the anguish of now everyone on here, presumably 10 to 100,000 people knowing the meaty details of their meat. We've got the passion and sexual compatibility, which again is very subjective. So if I don't like someone, it doesn't mean they're like hopeless in bed. And sustainability and consistency because I find those to be very important in bed because when you fuck someone only once, you're likely to get not as great of sex because it's kind of like either just drunk sex or like sex where you don't really know the person. So you're just doing like the basic thing. Whereas if you get to know someone a little bit better, you get to know their kinks, the shit that they like a lot. You get to tell them what you like and there's more trust. So like they can really go hard on you, which is something obviously I enjoy. First guy, let's get into this. This is Casey, the guy I lost my virginity with. I was 13, he was 13. I brought it up, but he also wanted to do it. We had sex twice, a total of twice, which for some reason at that age felt like a lot. I did suck his dick a lot before that, like all the time, but it's really hard to try to grade on a curve when you're 13 years old and you don't know what you're doing and you're losing your virginity to someone. I feel like that sex just wasn't that great. Even though my diary actually said that it was, but I think I was just so hyped on the idea of finally having sex when I was such a horny bitch since like nine years old that I was just hyped that we did it. Honestly, I'm gonna give Casey a C. C for Casey. We were young, again, I have no idea what he would be like today. It was really quick and weird and I don't know if either of us ever came. I think the only time he ever came maybe was when I was sucking his dick and anyway, let's not fuel your pedophilic dreams and just move on to the next one, which was Bradley. Bradley was in the same year. I cheated on Casey with Bradley. I was a huge piece of shit when I was younger. Again, watch my diary video if you wanna know most of the details. And I would say Bradley was a lot better. I liked his dick a lot more. It was like uncircumcised and like thicker and he was kind of like a shy but confident nerd and I really liked that about him. And the sex that we had, I remember like he had to jump out of my window because my parents came home. By the way, Jesus Christ, my parents watch my videos. Please don't watch this mom and dad. If you're like sitting here thinking like, oh, it might get better. This will be palatable for us. Please turn this off right now. You don't need to hear any of this. I know sometimes you guys will watch some of my more risque content within reason when I just like happen to go on a diatribe about some kind of sexual thing, but the video's not entirely about that. Please don't watch this one, mom and dad, I love you. See you next video. See you at the next f &M or something. Anyway, I'm gonna give Bradley a B. For Bradley, I guess we're just putting everyone where their names are. We only fucked a few times, but there was something more masculine and more fun about him. And maybe it was just because I was finally becoming experienced. He was also a virgin, but it just felt more like a better fit. And I was so mean to Casey, even though he was such a great fucking boyfriend that, I don't know, bad taste in my mouth, maybe just because of that. You know what? I'm actually gonna take this back. And thinking about the other sex that I've had, I feel like I have to put Casey at a D and Bradley at a C. Simply because I feel like we need something between B level and S level of this next person. Next is Jared. Jared was a long-term boyfriend of mine. We were dating for I think a year, a year and a half. It was when I was like 13, 14, 15, I'm not quite sure. It was the only actual relationship that directly proceeded before Jay. And Jared was a complete fuck boy. I think he cheated on me. I'm pretty sure he cheated on me. And he was in and out of juvie all the time, promising me that he would never steal another car again. He would never do anything illegal ever again. But oh my God, he was older than me by a year or two. He drove a car illegally all the time. We got up to no good. And I really do feel like in his own way, he loved me. Even like reflecting back on that relationship, I thought that I would have more anger for that because it was like a year or two of my youth where I felt like I was being treated pretty poorly and not really respected. I don't wanna go into detail about the relationship, but what I will say is that I do think he loved me and he definitely put in the work to get me as much sex as I wanted, which was definitely an astounding amount of sex at that time. Like I wanted it three times a day, every time. I remember he was working his ass off until he would like eventually go limp and be like, dude, I can't, I'm sorry. He was an attentive lover. We tried a lot of stuff together. He was the first person I did water play with or is that what it's called golden shower type stuff with we would find different fun places to fuck and he was always really honest with me at least sexually so I would say Jared was he wasn't amazing or anything there wasn't anything that was really perfect about our chemistry he just put a lot of effort in and I really 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 liked and probably loved him that was probably the first person I ever actually loved and it was funny because it was kind of like a kick in the face to be treated pretty synonymously with how I treated Casey by someone that I finally grew to love and care for more than just an infatuation when I was younger. But anyway, Jared's cock was pretty average, I would say, for that age. It was decent. 
circumcised. I actually don't remember much about it, I just remember it being very adequate. And the sex being almost as much as I needed at that time. I think from here on, the sex is gonna go up. Actually, no, the next two people, I just read the names, the sex is gonna go down for a little bit. We're gonna move on. I wish you weren't so weird with me now so that we could like make amends and get coffee or something. And I would love to actually get out of you whether or not you cheated because still, I think up until five years ago, last time we talked or something, you were saying, that you never did, but I don't believe it. And there was actually a girl named Tara that I'm pretty sure he cheated with, like, moving on. The next person is Steve. Oh my God, I was so infatuated with Steve. Steve was this like two years older but not going to school guy when I was like 14 or something, who was also friends in the same clique that like Jared and my best friend Andrew and everyone ran with. He was a, the biggest pothead, he was a skater, he was so fucking cute. You would go into his house and he'd have like porn posters all over that would make you feel a little insecure about yourself, but you're like, hey, I'm also like a blonde girl, so maybe he'll like me as much as he likes. Jenna Jameson or something. I wanted him for so many years when I was younger. And then two or three years after meeting him, we finally fucked and I know I fucked him twice, but I don't remember the first time we fucked. I think I'm conflating two different memories for the first time that we fucked. So it was either, just, just listen to this, where we were laying on the couch of a friend's house and he just happened to like stick his dick in me real quick and then be like, oh my God, and leave and not finish. Or we just cuddled that time and he left and I made that time up either entirely or there was a different time, I don't remember. But the time I do remember was another really weird instance where we were inside an abandoned building smoking pot with his friend Kyle, which is unfortunately my uh, uh, fourth guy that I fucked. Yeah, the fourth guy that I fucked. Jesus fucking Christ. Steve just decided to stick his dick in me. I don't remember anything about his dick. And I was like, oh God, yes, yeah, Steve is fucking me, but he's fucking me in front of Kyle. This is so fucking weird. And then Kyle comes over and like tries to stick his dick in me and kind of does. And I wait a second and I'm like, no, and push him away. And it was like the weirdest fucking thing ever. And then I left and Steve never finished. And it was always like Steve really pulled away from me when I was infatuated with him when I was younger and then I kind of got over him but then I got to fuck him and I was like yes this is like something that has to come to fruition because it was so long that I wanted to fuck you that I'm going to do this now and then he would always pull away like fuck I don't want to be doing this like it was weird. From the time that I met him to the time that I fucked him, I did get a lot hotter too. I was like finally starting to look like a human, like a girl or a, like a woman or whatever. But yeah, I don't remember much about it. So Steve is going to be a C just because like I really wanted it so bad. It was like something that had to happen. And Kyle, that three seconds of uh, whatever the fuck that was is going to be a D. Cause yeah, this whole time I was still with Jared. This is not right of me to keep staying with someone who kept going to juvie and probably was cheating on me and then cheat on him and try to make him jealous by going out and drinking and smoking with his friends. It wasn't the right thing to do. I should have broken up with him a long time before that, but I still wanted to like make it work, but I also wanted to feel loved in the meantime. And I'm glad that I learned these lessons and how it makes other people feel and how it makes me feel to do that early on because then I knew that at the certain point where, yeah, it makes sense that we fuck other people, we decided to be honest about it, like with Jay and I. And now we have like a much stronger bond because we're honest about that kind of thing and don't sugarcoat it, etc. But anyway, also during my relationship with Jared and right before Jay, there was this guy, Chris. Chris was Puerto Rican. Chris was in a metal band in my high school. I think he was a year or two older than me. He played guitar. He wore Megadeth shirts. He was so fucking badass. He definitely wasn't my ideal physically. He was, I think, kind of short, but not like shorter than me or anything. I've never fucked anyone even close to shorter than me. I'm 5'4", so it's kind of hard anyway. And he was pretty overweight, I guess you could say, but he had a good build. I think if he he worked out. I think he is fit now. I think he would be much more attractive. He had a nice square jaw that I liked, so he was physically okay, but his dick was interesting. I had things that I loved about that thing and things that I hated. It was basically just like an upgraded version of Bradley's dick, but brown, and it had that problem with foreskin a little bit that I really don't like with uncircumcised dicks. Like I prefer uncircumcised dicks, but this one thing is something that I don't like as much. I feel like I'm giving too much detail on the dicks, but he was fun. He never took off his shirt. He was insecure about his body, I think, but like there was passion there. And so I would say that he was definitely a B. It was short lived. It was a fuck buddy situation. I ended up being a huge bitch to him because I was salty that he wanted to end the relationship because he was still into his ex. It was really stupid and messy. And yeah, I was still only like 14, 15. So I feel really bad about it. But yeah, let's end these uh, underage horny girl mistakes and get on to the wonderful Jay, the person I still share my house with today. I was 14 or something when I met him. He was 16, 15 or 13 and he was 15. I'm not sure. He's two grades older than me, a year and a half older than me. He is gone. 
not the best dick ever. It's it's big. It's oh, I'm not gonna give too much detail because he is also a private person. That's why we don't do many sex stories on here with him. But yeah, that's that's the only S tier dick I've ever had. We have great chemistry. I'm still not sick of fucking him. 17 years of fucking him from being like an underaged, skinny, lanky, tall guy to being like this big buff Viking badass. I am still not sick of fucking him and it feels like we've kind of just evolved sexually together. He does have one or two downfalls and that is that it's very hard to tell if he's actually enjoying it without him being very rough. So sometimes he gets into my favorite thing, which is the roughest, most animalistic shit ever. But aside from just being really fucking rough and manhandling me, there's no like um, true tell. Like let's say if I'm riding him or I'm sucking his dick or something, there's no real true tell that he really likes it, which is kind of a double-edged sword. On one hand, if I'm watching a porn or I'm with a guy, it hasn't happened to me. I don't think that guys are this bad that it turns me off. But if I'm watching a porn and a guy's like really talking a lot or sounding kind of, for lack of a better word, effeminate or gay when they're like orgasming or when they're moaning or if they're like saying my actual name a lot instead of giving me some kind of sexy pet name, it can be a big turnoff. So like I'm glad that he's more on that side, but at the same time it gives me kind of like a I hope you're having fun with this. Let's make you pound me into the ground into submission so that I know for sure you liked it because that's the only way I can tell. So that's literally the only downfall I would say with Jay other than I guess he kind of thinks that some of the like dumb role playing kink things that I like, like uh, an actual rape fantasy playing out is too cringe to try. But I think he's warming up to more stuff that he finds cringe and kind of letting go of that portion of his ego, which is also really cool. I feel like we're just moving further and further into being great for each other sexually. So definitely Jay, the only S tier cock I've ever had. The next cock belongs to a German man named Thomas. Um, I don't think I've ever divulged that I fucked this person in specific detail, but I did make a sex story about it and a lot of people guessed who it was and I really don't think at this point that he would mind that we had a one night stand I guess you would call it because we only fucked once but I won't give any more detail other than that I liked his cock it was nice it was thick he also had the problem but way more so of me not even knowing what he liked because he was German so he was just kind of like doing it it was very mechanical but it was also hot because he was whispering German shit in my ear and I would say I think if we developed that relationship he would definitely at least be a tier cock maybe he is a tier cock right now he would be high a tier cock probably like a high a tier cock fuck buddy because of him being German and I love that and because he's fit and because I like his cock and all that stuff and the whispering of German in my ear, but I would definitely say that Thomas, the German, is an A-tier cock. The next person I fucked is also something that I tried to keep secret that became a scandal because I ended up having to stick up for him in a video about how he wasn't some kind of sexual assaulting rapist or something, and that is the Toby Turner of course. You guys know his name, you know who he is, I just don't want to talk too much in specifics, but I would say that while he was fun and while he had some of the passion that I really like, that like very obvious passion, and he could go for a long time and it was a lot of fun and stuff, there was a lot of drama involved and there were a lot of things that I didn't like about that relationship. It was also one of my more long-term fuck buddy situations, so it was interesting to kind of have that, but I did have to travel for it, so it wasn't something that I could do often. And honestly, I think it could have been a a lot better if he were more honest with me and a few other things were different. I'm gonna give Toby a C. I feel like at the time, in the moment, I would have given him like a high B or a low A or something. But looking back on it, outside of the obvious infatuation that I had for him at the time, I would definitely give him a C, yeah, for sure. The penultimate person that I slept with, I am just going to nickname W. I can't really give you any reasons as to why. Um, he was definitely very responsive. Dick was not my favorite by any means, probably lower tier dick for sure, but his effort and how quickly we clicked because I think we were friends and we spent a lot of time together. I would definitely give him a B. WB, Warner Brothers. He had some personality traits and tryhardness that I really liked and that's what turned me on to him in the first place was a personality trait of him being good at something because that sometimes can make me get into nerds because they're good at something and that makes me be like, ooh, I wanna surround myself with this guy's cock and this guy's cum or whatever. So yeah, we only fucked a few times, but I think that could 
have blossomed into something that was fun, but I also felt like he was a little too emotional about it. I feel like a lot of these guys on this list, like Thomas wasn't, Chris wasn't, Steve and Kyle obviously weren't, and those were also before I started doing the fuck buddy thing anyway. But like sometimes it feels like they get a little too attached and it becomes a little too scary, especially with people like W and Toby because those were after Jay, so I'm not really looking for a life partner or to like fall madly in love with someone. So that brings us to the last person, which I'm going to nickname so you can't even like search by the first letter of his name, TL. It has nothing to do with his name. Don't search any TLs on my Instagram or anything like that. I don't know if he'll ever make an appearance in my videos, but it's an ongoing thing right now, so I have to be really careful with what I say. I also haven't even told you the sex story or the story about how we met, so I'm gonna keep all that for later, but I will give you a little tidbit. I really like TL in terms of sex. It's dumb because I can't even say most of the things that I want to say, most of the details. It would be so awkward if you ever found out and I want to keep the possibility open that I one time like post him on my story or something. So I don't want to completely ruin his entire life and embarrass the shit out of him. There's something about his cock that is a little bit special. And at first I was like, is this going to be something that I like? And it's not like weird special. It's just like different than something that I've had before. Hard to explain, but I wasn't sure if I would be into it. And oh my God, I'm into it. It's really good for a bunch of different positions and he's very passionate but also safe like he's not gonna fall in love with me he's not looking to like spend every waking moment with me even though I'm in this kind of like honeymoon phase where I really just want to get him out of my system I admire like how well he is pacing everything and how much we can communicate about stuff and that he's not just for sex and that I can see him often because he lives kind of close and yeah I would definitely say he's a high A for sure so we're gonna put TL at a high A. More developments later on that one. I can't really talk too much about it, but he's got the passion, he's got the communication, he's got the safety where I don't feel like this is gonna end in some kind of ridiculous dramatic shit or he's not like married or anything. He's got the cool job that makes me attracted to him because it's like, ooh, you know, man in a uniform kind of thing. Yeah, he's like the perfect fuck buddy, I would say. Just has some deal breakers that would make it so that he's not a good life partner. And he's also not the best dick I've ever had. So I'm still coming home to the best dick I ever had. So it's just like a supplement that's very different. He's very normy, which is interesting as well. It's interesting to incorporate very opposite people into your life, especially when when some of the core values are similar, I'm having fun. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons that I'm shit at uploading videos, basically. But yeah, the tier list is as follows over there. It's probably been on the screen the entire time. I do want to say thank you to all, except for probably Steve and Kyle, that I fucked. And even all of the people who aren't on this list whose dick I sucked, which would probably add like five to ten more people. I'm not sure. Maybe five, just five more people. I don't think it's a lot. I'm only thinking of like two or three in my head, so I doubt it's more than five. But you guys have taught me a lot. You've taught me more about my body. I'm glad that you were there to experiment with. And thanks for giving me the orgasms that most of you guys did. I basically didn't have any orgasms during regular sex without clitoral stimulation until Jay. I think I had a few with Jared, maybe like one or two. I don't I don't remember, but I remember that we'd always have to supplement stuff for me to orgasm every time. And that's probably why with Jared, I wanted to fuck like a hundred times a day because it took me a hundred times of like messing around and doing other things to actually orgasm. But since Jay, I've been like really easy to orgasm via penetration, which is really weird. It's like I figured out what moves I like or something, or I've become less in my head about it, I'm not sure. I remember being really insecure around the Jared era and before and even at the beginning of the Jay era. And now I'm so much not that even though I don't consider myself to be this perfect body, I do have fun fucking guys with my porn star looking body and my big fake tits and just enjoying my curves that I have and the positions that feel good with every specific dick. You know, after this last guy though, I don't, I still don't believe, okay, I can't even say that, fuck, God damn it. I, I wish I could tell you more. I'm sorry. I love you guys. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this. This was fun to walk down memory lane in my head with as much as I could fucking tell you, which wasn't too much. Sorry about that. But yeah, hopefully more to come. Who knows? But right now I'm happy having one that I have at my beck and call almost, almost all the time. I love you guys. I will see you in the next video. Like I said in the beginning, please do let me know if there's anything else you want me to tier list. It could be sexual stuff or it can be regular stuff. What would you like to hear from me? I want to have more consistent like clickbaity shit that I can upload alongside the good shit which I will get back to, I swear. I'm gonna actually spend this week editing the R5 unboxing and the three tests for the R5. It's like the biggest undertaking of editing ever. And I swear, I'm just like putting it off indefinitely, which is ridiculous because I shouldn't do that because it's gonna be a great video as long as I take my time with it and put the love into it that I want to. But always, of course, that triggers my fear of failure in my head. And then I go like, fuck, I'm gonna like completely ruin it. And then I wasted so much time making this video that I don't even fucking like and I'm not proud of. So we're just gonna do it, do our best to get it out there. And you guys are gonna 
enjoy it. The B-roll is going to come back, and we're finally going to go adventuring again, and everything's going to be great. I love you guys. I'm going to go nurse this headache while I edit this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Woo! Cheers to my dick tier list. Almost all of you were a wonderful and viable contribution to my life. Bye!